aisle. Uh, the purpose of this video, uh, hold on, let's take the glasses off because I'm getting the glare off the computer screen. The purpose of this video is tied in to a thread I've got on the Cloud9 Vaping Forum. And it's to do with the Eco Wall silica wick um, and sheathing a stainless steel wick in it, um, which virtually does away with hot spots, believe it or not. And I hope will help out people that have a problem with stainless steel. This is an Argo tea that I've already done, um, I've, I've been re wicking different bits and pieces for the last three days to try and get this right so before I make this video um, there you go not a lot wrong with that and as you can see there's not a lot wrong with that at all I could probably get more vapor out here by turning the voltage up but it does me fine as it is um, Right, to the purpose of the video. There's number Arga T. Um, I've already made this video five times, and each time something has basically gone up the wall. Um, <coughs> it's now up past three in the morning. Fortunately, I'm off work for a fortnight. Um, so I'm going to have one last try now. If it don't work, uh, half a bottle of scotch, and I'll have another try tomorrow. Anyway, here goes. I'll just turn the camera down. Oh, you can see what I'm doing. Right. First off, a piece of stainless steel mesh. Seven centimetres long. Yes, that's seven centimetres. And one centimetre wide. Um, oops. The reason you need it is thin is because you've got to try and roll this down to around about a millimetre in diameter um, so that you've got support for the eco wall oh, one thing I know everyone does it anyway but because this isn't being torched um, because this isn't being torched make sure all your edges are trimmed of any snags because you cannot have any snags in it because if you do you're never going to get it to go through the eco wall come on be nice to me you wouldn't believe I have smoked roll ups for 40 years before I've started vaping would you not after that anyway right there you go bibbidi bum one stainless steel wick um, here you go now Argo T has got this wick hole is around about 2.6 millimeters now you've got to remember the this braid is 2 millimeter braid so that has got to be pretty damn small to fit inside right the next thing you need is I, I got this off a friend uh, one of my lady friends who used it in her knitting uh, I don't quite know what it was used for but it's a still other women when they see this may know what it is I ain't got a clue I'm just a mere man it's pointed at both ends but they're very 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 no it's not going to have it they're very very rounded points quite blunt like um, a large darning needle I would assume I know what that is yeah so, just blow on the end. This is this is roughly one and a half times the length of the wick. And if you blow open the strands on the end, because this stuff does fray like man, mad. Insert one end in. Now, when you put it on, don't pull it on. You've got to push it from behind whatever it is you're putting it on. Doesn't matter what it is. You've got to push it from behind so that it 
basically concertinas up it opens up and slips on there quite nicely now try not to pull this around too much because it frays like anything which is why this wick is so long if it's not that long it'll fray down and you won't have enough to cover your wick um, <clears throat> there was a suggestion um, about just sheathing the top part of a stainless steel wick which when I discovered this about this eco wall was my first thought being lazy and trying to do things the easy way and not thinking them out <clears throat> and I thought right I'll do that I'll whack that on there but because the top end of a wick is so short um, it frayed to pieces before you could get it coiled up so I then sat down and thought about it, tried out three or four different ways and this is the way that I found worked. Right, the next thing we need to do is stiffen this braid up a bit because otherwise it's too damn floppy. It sounds like it's been at the beer. So we just heat it up. This is why it's on the big steel pin. Also this is quite good because if there's anything left on there from the manufacturer this burns it off. So in theory it should stop you getting any off tastes. This bit boring I do apologise folks. Uh, completely new at this. Uh, didn't expect quite the response from me from me post that I got. Mm, it's getting a bit warm, mate. You've got to heat it up red, it, it, so it glows red. You won't burn it. Not raw, it's silica, so it's designed to operate at extremely high temperatures. So one of the reasons we're heating this up is when you take it off of this pin, it holds the diameter better. Um, I must have gone through, I don't know, God knows how much of this stuff before I realised this, because um, it's similar to something that I've seen on, seen on one of the other forums in the States. There's a stuff, I forget exactly what it's called, but it sounds like it's very similar to this. THX or something like that, anyway. Um, they're all raving about it, but it can't be sold outside the States. Um, and I happen to see a, a bit on a forum about that, and uh, about heating it up to, to slow down the frame. You won't stop it, but it slows it down. And I thought, aye, aye, I'll give that a try. And, yeah, it does work to an extent. Obviously this steel pin is going to be bloody hot. We want the wick to cool down. Try not to handle it while it's still too warm. Even, even you know, sliding it off the pin or whatever. Let it cool down a bit before you do anything with it. When you slide it off, slide it from the back end, not that end, don't pull it off, push it off. Uh, the reason for that is it keeps its shape a lot more. Excuse me, I'm going to have a mouthful of coffee. Oh my god, cold coffee. Right, if you very, when this is in this state, be as gentle as you can with it. Key gloves don't come into it. Just put my glasses on so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Can't see the old. Right, 
Right now, what you can do, put that. You turn that over on its end. If you've let that cool down nicely, and on its own, and you've heated it up and nice, so it hasn't gone back and it stayed fairly rigid, you should see a hole down the middle. Put your wick in it, very gently twisting it round and round. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, please note I use the word if, and I ain't going to be lucky, but yes I am. Right, that wick is now in there. There's the other end of the stainless steel. And there it is there, and that is sliding backwards and forwards in there quite nicely, which is very handy. Right, hold this in the middle and pull this back out. Hold it and pull it back out. But make sure you keep that wick in the centre where it was. Now pull this out. We want it to grip the stainless steel wick. So get hold the ends, give it a good tug. Like that. Here's the end of the stainless steel. There's the end of the stainless steel. So that is that get another tug because it will try and go back believe it or not keep tugging it and working it out because don't forget that's got to go into a small hole right when you've got that stage there oops there goes my wire trim this off literally and I mean literally just below where the end of the stainless steel wick is. Pinch it and then cut. Now the reason we've done that, two reasons, still gives us a bit to pull this and make sure it's nice and tight and it also insulates the wick from touching the bottom of the tank. So even if you, your wick is bedded in and you've got current going into the stainless steel wick it is not going to touch the bottom of the tank so it's only well an eighth an inch I suppose not even an eighth right and the next bit is gently 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 form that bottom end to stop it fraying and then twist it in but keep hold no, it's not going. this is this is the really dodgy bit getting this to go in there and you got to keep because if you don't pull it it goes back and it makes it not impossible to get in there you go look at that There you go, and you push that down on the bottom, and there you are. That's that in there, insulated from the bottom of the tank. You can push that down a bit, give you a little bit of extra wick in there. Right, I'm going to use some 34 canthol for my coil. And that's another thing you got to be when you're wrapping the coil on this in a, in a one way you've got to be a lot more careful than if you're wrapping it on on a stainless steel wick for the simple reason if you do it too tight you choke the wick which is what I've done with the first couple and I couldn't figure out and I'm thinking well why is it not wicking and then sort of got the old light bulb above the head you know you shoot with so and so it's not wicking because oops you've strangled the wick and then my excuse is I was in holiday mode so right. there they are under there right, that's under there and round here no, here we go
but if you start getting your wraps too far apart just release the pressure on them slide them down then tighten them up again because once they're on here you cannot move them around too much because it don't like it take a chance because there's one there that's a little bit too close together. I'm going to take the chance that it's... that's it. Right, put that in now. Chest of coil. Which I always test the coils before I cut the towels. 2.1. That'll do me. That's good enough. Right, now just check everything's tight. Uh, see that wasn't uh, come loose. So we tighten that up again. Because that might have given me an odd reading and check them again. I don't think I've ever used a multi-tester as much as what I have since I started vaping. Right now that's come down to 1.8 now. 1.7. A bit low for what I like but it'll do. Just tidy that up. Just let the tail right out of the way. Just double check that again. Take that off. Get off. off there right now I've tried this in di di different ways cutting this this wick off on the top in different ways um, I think the best way because you've got room in the housing just pinch it it's a little bit tall I know you can always take it a bit lower if you want See that is soaking juice up already. But I have better stick it up in the air there. Give it a little bit of juice. Just to help it on its way, so to speak. Let's see what we get. Oh yes. Loads of vapour. Wait the top on. Excuse me. Bring the camera back up. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Um, it's not like a, a straight mesh. Um, the flavour comes through a bit slower. I think in that way you've possibly got the worst of the mesh and the silica. Um, this other one, I would say it took a good tank to get the flavour coming through. The vapour was coming through no problems, but it took a good tank to get the flavour up. Mm. Oh my granny, absolutely gorgeous. The strange thing is, I've noticed with these two, the two Argos, they're both, both bought at the same time. This one's, even though the hole looks the same size, seems to have a tighter draw. Hmm. Yeah, it's much tighter draw. I'll have to see about squeezing some a bit of stainless steel mesh in there. Close that hole down a bit. Anyway, there you are, people. Um, people were asking me on the forum. 
to do that. I've done that. And I'll see if I can get it to upload now. All stay safe.